The world around us has lots of solids. Solids are 3D shapes, three-dimensional. They have length, they have breadth or width, and they have depth. Now solids, they are divided mainly into two main families, the prisms family and the pyramids family. Let's look at each one. We're going to notice very similar features in the prisms and you're also going to notice similar features are also available in the pyramids. Let's look at the prisms first. The prisms are basically the shapes that you see there. There are several prisms out there, but they're some of the main ones that we see. We have the rectangular prism, the square prism, which we know of as the cube, the triangular prism, the pentagonal prism, and we also know as the trapezoidal prism. Now all these prisms have things that are in common. They have faces, as you see marked there in blue. We have the rectangular face, therefore the rectangular prism. The cube has the square face, and the triangular prism has the triangular face, and also has other faces there, which are the rectangles there as well, and the pentagonal why is it called pentagonal prism? Because the main face, the cross-section, as you can see in blue, is the pentagon. And that trapezoidal prism, the cross-section, the main face there is the trapezium. So these prisms have faces. Some have more faces than others. Some have the same similar shape of face, like the rectangular prism. They're all going to be rectangles. The cube, they're all going to be, the face are all going to be uh, squares. However, the triangular prism has triangles and also rectangles. The pentagonal prism has a pentagonal cross-section, but it also has rectangles around it. And the trapezoidal prism has the main face as the trapezium, but it also has rectangles surrounding it uh, to make up the solid shape. Now, these also have what we call edges. Edges are the edge, as the name suggests, marked in red there for you to see and identify the edge of these prisms. And we also know a very special feature that is available there called the vertices. The vertices are plural for the vertex. The vertex is what we know in baby language as the corner. Okay, the corner, as you can see, pointed there with the arrow, the vertex or the vertices are the corners on these solids. Then we have the pyramids. Now the pyramids are very special in the sense that they have what we call an apex. An apex is the pinnacle, it is the top, it is that sharp top bit on top of the pyramid we call the apex. All pyramids have to have an apex. Now pyramids have two types of heights. Now this is critical that you understand two types of heights. They have what we know as the slant height, which is the height that is slanting. And we also know that the pyramid has what we know the vertical height. The vertical height is the height from the apex down to the center of the pyramid, uh, right down the middle of the base of the pyramid. So very important to identify the difference between the slant height and the vertical height. Later on, we're, go we're going to be using them to work out the surface area of pyramids and also the volume of pyramids. And it's very important to distinguish between the slant height and the vertical height. Now we see as well pyramids have faces and pyramids are named depending on their base. So if the pyramid has a square base, then it's called a square pyramid. If it has a triangular base, it is going to be called a triangular pyramid. If it has a pentagonal base. A pentagon as the base of the pyramid is going to be a pentagonal pyramid. Now as you can see of course all the surrounding faces of the pyramids except for the base are always going to be triangular in shape. So these are the two main solid families that we have. The prism family and the pyramid family. We also know other solids like the cylinder 
and the sphere they don't fit in any of those two families but they are also solids for your information as well but it's important to know the features the properties we are going to be using them a lot when we're working with volume and surface area in years to come